Hey, it's Joshua Gar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And we're coming to you, actually, for the final time, for a recap of our days here at CES 2015. Yes, we did bring you a day zero, chronicling a couple of days before the show actually started, and then we brought you a day one. And then it got crazy <laughs> after that. So we're going to bring you just the last few days. Today is actually the last day, so you saw a lot of people from the public getting into CES. So it was probably a madhouse there, and you guys could tell us a little bit about that because uh, they were able to come to the show floor for a little bit today. But nonetheless, we saw a lot of great products ever since then. I'm here joined, of course, by Lon, our fearless leader, Darcy, and Kevin, the tech ninja. Give us a hooyah. Hooyah! <laughs> so we're standing here in the promenade uh, between the link and... Actually, we're in the link. And behind us is the famous high roller Ferris wheel. We're going to get on that probably in a little bit, and you'll see some footage of that coming up in a highlight reel that I'm going to have for you. But I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Darcy, and uh, he'll tell us about the last couple of days, mostly today, because you were able to kind of finish off the week pretty strong, right? Yeah. Thanks, Josh. Hey, guys. Hope you enjoyed our coverage here. Obviously, you're seeing a lot of incredible video coverage from our wonderful team here. Uh, I'm At this point, you, usually I get uh, kind of sentimental and very grateful. You know, we've all been working so hard to deliver you the very best of all things mobile technology and Android. And we're very, very fortunate to have great relationships with a lot of these wonderful manufacturers that just want to create awesome products that you guys love. And our job is to just report on everything as objectively as possible to make the highest quality content so that you can see what's coming in the future. Um, obviously, I think, you know, we have our awards coming up here. Uh, but today we went and stopped by Blue, who has some really competitive price products, Sub 200, LTE. They're using a lot of Samsung technology, a lot of AMOLED panels. They have a 5,000 milliamp phone coming, uh, Sub 179 price point. Yep. Uh, other than that, uh, obviously, I think the major thing of the show would be the LG G Flex 2, and uh, I'd like to pass it off because it's a super hot phone. Yeah, yeah so here you go. All right, well, yeah, th that was what uh, Darcy and these two were able to see today, but over the last couple of days, we were able to see other phones by, let's say, Asus. Yep the uh, wonderful Zenfone 2 for a really good price point that brings some pretty compelling specifications. Uh, but, you know, really the G Flex 2 is probably our best in show. We actually have uh, our first ever pilot episode podcast uh, talking about it. The Friday debate this week was about our favorite item of CES. And you can see that already on the channel. We will have that podcast syndicated across all the different channels. But uh, for now, you can see it at our channel and make sure you uh, share on social media. We're going to have our podcast coming regularly, the Friday debates. But yes, the G Flex 2, for the most part, was our consensus. Uh, but what I wanted to do in this final recap was just ask these two guys here who have experienced their first CES, what their final thoughts kind of were about the Consumer Electronics Show of 2015. What was it like for you guys to be here and to cover it with, especially this team? Uh, yeah, it was it was awesome. It was it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was a lot of really hard work, as you guys probably already know. A lot of videos that we put a lot of work into, uh, but it was a lot of fun being able to see all these really cool gadgets. Although I would have, I wish I had the opportunity to walk the floor one more time to just kind of scope things out without carrying my equipment. But there's always next year. Uh, but. I'm just happy I was able to, you know, meet everybody on the team. So we're not just, you know, faces on computer screens anymore. Yeah, we're all, we all got a chance to meet each other, so that was really cool. Yeah. Uh, and I was able to cross CES off my bucket list. You know, I always wanted to attend the show, and I, I had the opportunity to do it this year. So I was, so I'm, I was super excited to be here, and it was just, it was a really fun time. Uh, and I can't wait to do it again. It's just been a blast. So to sort of mirror what Lon was saying, that it, it was uh, a dream of mine to go to CES and actually check it out. Um, it was really interesting actually being able to um, see everything, see how what all goes behind providing good coverage, so getting access to devices before they come out months in advance sometimes and being able to be some people's first look to see some devices, a real humbling feeling knowing that this is their first experience with the phone is in my hand. So that's a really cool feeling to, to enjoy that. Um, you know, it, it really, really being from Detroit, it really reminds me of the auto show, except for it's on a grander scale and it's of things that actually are going to come out eventually. It's really cool just to see these new TVs and things that are going to be filling Best Buys and filling Amazon.coms really soon and hopefully in my living room, <laughs> especially the TV. So. Um, as a final uh, sort of send-off, uh, we did talk about our favorite and worst uh, items at CES, but now that we've had a couple days since our last recap to sort of see even more out there, have your answers changed at all? Was there anything that really caught your eye over the last couple days? Uh, no, my answer hasn't changed. It's still the, uh, the 4K TVs from Sony running Android TV. Uh, but uh, we did get to check out Blue today, um, and they have some really cool products, actually. Like, they're really 
they have really nice build quality. They're really awesome phones, especially for the price, like what you're getting for the money. It's it's really kind of cool what they're doing. So um, I know a lot of people don't really look at them too much, but they're definitely worth checking out, especially if you want like a really high quality phone without paying, you know, uh, six, seven hundred dollars to get one. So uh, so check out Blue is really cool today. And, you know, they're, wor they're worth worth looking at if you're looking for a great budget phone. So just look at our, you know, our awards, our top picks is CES. So we had the Fugu XL, it's like an indestructible speaker that sounds, in my opinion, better than the Bose sound like two or three. Um, LG G Flex 2, I mean, P OLED, amazing battery life, and it's flexible. I mean, it, that's a hot ass phone. HTC, the Desire A26, pretty good looking phone. Not totally sold on it, but you know, we'll review it and check it out. Oh, and the Sennheiser that we saw mm -hmm. uh, for soundguys.com, we saw the Sennheiser Urbanite Wireless. I mean, they're 500 bucks, but man. For me, the G Flex 2 is still probably the number one phone that I'm looking to check out. Um, but the Zenfone 2 actually found a way to find a way into my mind. I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't stop talking about the Zenfone 2 for some obvious reason. I don't know what it is. But the Zenfone 2, just I don't know what it is. I mean, I, I really love that price point. And for me, yeah. as a person who promotes getting out of a contract, I'm, I'm not a contract guy. Getting a phone for 200 bucks of that high quality is a great thing. Even if it's an incremental update, yeah something that you update every year, it's still cheaper than spending $700 on a phone that is only good for two years anyway. So I'm a big fan of the Zenfone, big fan of the Zenfone 2 and the 4K TV, that's gonna end up in my living room really soon. I'm a huge fan of that for obvious reasons. So um, for me to wrap up sort of what I enjoy and what I like, uh, pretty much anything we gave an award to. I mean, there's a, we actually all had input on that. So the Fugu speakers to me is really cool, especially if you wanna put it by the pool, you don't have to worry about <laughs> you know, splashing it or, or if you're at a party or anything like that, you don't want, you know, it to, people to spill on it. I mean, this, the person who did the demo, he was throwing it on the ground, <laughs> yeah. dipping it in water, doing all sorts of nasty, weird yeah. things to it. And it actually still works. So big fan of that. And um, yeah, that's about it. Well, that should pretty much do it. That's a wrap for our CES 2015. You will see some videos coming out still over the next few days, which is perfectly fine. Obviously, we have a queue to finish off. But nonetheless, uh, we are here, super happy to finally get to work as a team in the flesh, be able to be friends uh, more than just colleagues over the internet. And that, that is a sentiment that I share, and I'm sure we all do as well. Oh. But in any case, uh, make sure you stay tuned for the rest of our coverage of CES 2015. Also, coming up a highlight reel where you see us not only having fun together, but having fun with some of our favorite people in the general industry that we are in. So keep it tuned to you for Android Authority. St uh, stay subscribed and subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure you keep it tuned here because we are your source for all things CES 2015 and Android. We're going to get on the high roller and we'll see you beyond.